Hey everybody, welcome to another video here. My name is Mitchell Pearson and today I'm very excited about this video. If you like this video and you like what you see, make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button down at the bottom and uh, tell your family and friends. Why not? I have a family and friends plan. They can subscribe for free as well. What I want to talk about today, I was looking at my blog at MitchellPearson.com. I've been blogging for seven or eight years now and I'm finally starting to do the YouTube videos. And my most popular blog every day, every week, every month is how to add labels to a map in Power BI. I was actually pretty surprised that that was the most popular blog. And so today, that's exactly what we're going to be taking a look at. We're going to be taking a look at exactly what you see on the screen here, which is how do I add a data label to a map in Power BI? Now, here's the thing. I don't do this every day. So if you're looking at this video and you're like, Mitchell, this is old news. There's another way to do this. Let me know in the comments below. If there's a custom visual that already does this, I don't know about that custom visual. So let everybody know in the comments below. I'll do a video on that. However, if there isn't a custom visual, then we need one. So talk to your favorite custom visual designer and let them know this is a big demand in the community. Once again, not that my blog is that popular, but number one viewed blog on my website every day, every week, every month, how to add data labels into a map in Power BI. So this is pretty popular. This is in demand. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to show you how to set it up so that it looks exactly like this. And you'll notice when you're looking at my screen here and you're looking at this chart that we have the, the Washington, we have the sales for Washington, we have the sales for Montana and Wyoming and so on and so forth. But you know that data labels don't really exist. So how do we make this happen? As we go through this video, I'm going to talk about some of the limitations with this method. There are some limitations with the method I'm showing you today. So it's important to know what those limitations are. This is not quite as good and dynamic as real data labels but we're going to make it work. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. This is our goal. This is the completed example. This is what we're going for. But what you would normally see in Power BI is you would see something that looks like this, right? You bring in your category that you want to do your slicing by. In this case, we're bringing in the state and then you add the size over here. We add the size to the, the, the size category. And what we're putting there is we're putting our total sales. So we're putting total sales in the size category right there. All right. So that's how we currently have this set up, but we're going to set this up and we're going to configure this a little bit differently. But first, before we do anything else, as mentioned before, if we go over to the properties pane for this, you'll notice that there is not a property. There is not a property for data category doesn't exist there. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to create a calculated column on our geography table. And this is just going to be geography cells or state cells. And that's what we're actually going to use inside of our category label, which is how we're going to set this up. Now there's a couple of elements here. One, if you want to use this method, you have to have the latitude and the longitude of the geographical location that you want to map. So what I've done here is, and let me pop over there. I went to this website right here and this was just a quick search. I don't even have the data from the original blog that I did three years ago or however long ago it was. I don't have those reports. So I just did a real quick search. I found this website. I downloaded the latitude and the longitudes for each of the different states and I brought those into Power BI. So this is what I'm going to be using for this example. Obviously, here's the first limitation. If we have to use latitude and longitudes for this, that's going to create a very unique set of columns that are going to take up more space in your data model. It also could be difficult to retrieve all of those latitude and longitudes for all the different data sources that you have, right? So that's the first limitation to this method. There's more than one, but that's the first one. So I've already brought it into the data model as you can imagine. And we have that here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create the column that we want to display as our data label. We're going to create it as a column, not as a measure. For those of you that know DAX, you know, there's a little bit of a limitation there. We'll talk more about that here in a little bit. So over on my geography table, I'm going to right click. And from that selection there, we're going to choose new column, right? So right click on geography, create a new calculated column, not a measure. That's a key element here because you can't put the measure where we're going to put this column. And we'll call this something like state cells, right? So state cells, cells by state. Actually, you know what? I'll do cells by state. I like that better equals. And then we're going to start building out this expression and, and you can build this any way you want. For my example, I'm actually going to put at the beginning here, I'm going to put the name of the state. So we'll do geography and then we'll bring in the state name like so. And then we're going to 
what do we want to add to this? We'll put in a, a double quote, a space, or a colon. Whoops, we need the ampersand sign. And then we'll do a colon, a space, and then a double quote. And then we'll do another ampersand sign. And so that gets me the name of the state, a colon, and a space. Now I want to add my metric on the end. And so the metric that we're going to be using in this example is our cells. So I'm going to tell it that I want to calculate. Remember, this is a calculated column, not a calculated measure. We're going to calculate our total cells. That is actually a measure we've already created. I could just type this out if I want, just to make this more explicit for those of you watching the video that aren't that familiar with DAX. Uh, I could do something like, you know, sum up the internet cells. Let's do this. Internet cells, sales amount. And it gives me the exact same thing that total sales would have given me a moment ago. So we're going to do that. And then down here, I'm going to type in all except. And the reason I'm doing all except is because, once again, it is a calculated column. And so what I'm doing is saying, look, no matter what level I'm at in the, the, the table, the geography table, we're going to be looking at every row. When you're looking at the first row in that table, if the state is Florida, I might have Florida and then I have Jacksonville, Florida. Then you have another row for Florida and that is Gainesville, Florida. Then you have another row and it's Fort Myers and you have another row and it's out. So I'm saying ignore the filter that's coming from the city. Ignore the filter that's coming from the zip code. Always return the total sales at the state level. Once again, this is one of the limitations with a calculated column is that calculated columns are static, meaning that the, the value of that column is determined when you publish it, not when it is filtered in the report. So as we navigate down to a lower level or we navigate up to a higher level, this calculation is really only going to be relevant for what we create it for, which is going to be at the state level. So all except we're going to say from the geography table and then we will ignore all filters from the geography table except for filters that are coming from the state column. And then we need to do one more thing. Of course, we're working with cells here. So what do we want to do? This is going to return what we want as far as the calculation of that. And then we want to take that result, that sales amount that gets returned for each state, and we want to format that in some way. So we're going to use our handy dandy format function here, which is really, really helpful. And we are going to simply format this with a currency. And I think it's going to look something like that. And so we're formatting it. So this gives us the state name and it gives us the formatting. So how does this work? Because remember, it's a calculated column that has the state in it. So we can't really format it with currency. So that's why we're doing it like this. So we've created cells by state. Here's what we're going to do. In our map, we're going to come over here and we are going to, in the field section, we're going to get rid of state. So as we see, it's no longer being mapped. And instead of mapping our locations with the state, we're going to actually map them with the latitude and the longitude. So I'll come over to my geography table. I will grab the latitude right here. I'll go over and grab the longitude right here and we'll drop it right there. And so now everything is being mapped exactly as it was before. Now I'm fine with this being um, the way that it is right here. This is perfect, latitude and longitude. Now the other thing that we want is the location. Now here's the thing about the location. Why do we need a location if we're using latitude longitude? Normally you wouldn't. Normally if you're using the latitude longitude, you don't use the location, the state or the country because you're using the latitude longitude. The reason we're going to use the location is because one of the properties within the formatting and what makes this whole trick work, this is a cool trick, but what makes this work is in the properties pane, there is an option to turn on category labels or in other words, over here, we're going to turn on this category label right here. And when we turn it on, it's going to display the category label, which is latitude longitude, but that's not what we want to display. What we want to display is the state name and the sales amount. So we'll come back over to our field section here and we are going to go into this table. We're going to grab our sales by state, drop it right here on location. And that gives us a temporary error message here. But what we're going to do is just take our latitude and our longitude and we're going to do an average because for each state we have multiple latitude and longitude. So we're going to get the average of each state and we will do the same thing for the longitude here. Let's go ahead and grab the average. That solves that problem and here we go. Now we have our data labels and this right here is really, really cool. Now once again, there are some limitations with this. One, it's a calculated column. It's not a measure. So if I were to add the city in here, you know, and you drill down, 
all you're going to see is you kind of see the same results, right? It's the data label. It is what it is. So there are some limitations with this method because it's calculated columns. It's not a measure. Ideally, we'd have data labels and the value would change as you navigate up and down your hierarchy. The other limitation is the fact that we need to bring in the latitude and the longitude. The fact that we have to bring those in can make it more difficult or make this a non-starter. So once again, if you know of a better way to do this, you know of a custom visual that solves this problem, let me know, let the world know, put it in the comments below. We would love to see that. I hope you enjoyed this quick tip for Power BI. If you did, once again, like and subscribe. And if you enjoyed, thank you. Have a good day. We'll see you next time.